So let's talk, let's dive right in about good things. And, um, you know, when I was a young man, I was about 16 years old. I got in my first fight, my first real fight. And I, I weighed about 100 pounds. And the guy uh, that was fighting against me, he was a lot taller. And, 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 you know, I was just mouthing off. And he hit me in the ear. And all of a sudden, I backed up. And, and everything around me started spinning. Like, like um, I, it was almost like... You know, you, you get boxed in the ear and all of a sudden um, my surroundings weren't clear. And so I was kind of stumbling around and, and fortunately, uh, thank you Jesus, uh, I, there was no more hitting. It was just, uh, it, it definitely shut my mouth. Uh, but, you know, I was just stunned in that moment. And I tell you this because I think 2020 was kind of a punch to some people. Uh, it was kind of like, man, fear began to grip some of us. And I just wanna encourage you that when that happens, sometimes we just can't hear what God is saying. And so I wanna encourage you that when fear or when there's been a wound, um, there's something that we can do that God has set up for the body of Christ to come together. Now, I've heard people say, I am the church, and they're talking about themselves. They'll say, I am the church, you know, I am the church, so it's not in within four walls, I am the church. And what they're really saying is, is they don't understand that the body is made up of different parts. And so if an ear says, I am the body, then that's just not true. The body takes more parts. Hey, thank you for joining me in my living room. I'm excited to bring in the new year. So it's 2021. And last week we talked about compassion and how the Holy Spirit is inside of you. It's inside of us. And us as believers, we have the spirit of Christ Jesus. So I'm excited for 2021 because Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You can have hope and faith in 2021. And today I just want to talk to you and encourage you that 2021 is about God things, not just good things. And I want to explain the difference between good things and God things. And we were created for good works, which are good things. And then also, too, there's some moments where God is doing things behind the scenes that you and I can't see. And so sometimes uh, the things that we can't see, we have to trust him and we have to we have to know that he is working on our behalf. And that's what a good father does. And that's who your father and my father is, is he is a good father father that's working behind the scenes uh, on your behalf. He wants to protect you and he wants to cover you and love you and, and speak to you and, and honor you and bring double honor for shame. And that's the father that you and I serve. And it's the good news that Jesus came uh, to be sin so that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so I'm telling you this because we need the different parts of the body uh, especially when we're hurting and there's fear and we've been punched, to really come and just minister what the Word of God is saying. And, and, and it takes the body coming together. And, and I love Acts because it showed us what they were doing is they were coming together as a body in unity. And so the church was being, it was growing in numbers. And, and even Jesus, before he left and ascended into heaven, he said, you know, go into all the world and make disciples and uh, preach the good news. And so they did. I mean, the church is growing, and it was a really uh, good thing for them to preach the good news. And then the Holy Spirit says something, and I, I want to uh, read it to you. So let me read this to you. It's in Acts 16, uh, chapter 16, verse 5, and it says, the churches were strengthened in the face, and they, faith, not in the face, they were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. Now, when they had gone through, Phryge, I'm going to call it um, Phryge, Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Now, Jesus had said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, preach the good news. But they were forbidden. It says they. So they were leaning on each other to hear the Holy Spirit that told them not to go into an area. Now, I need you to hear this because so many people... When they hear the Holy Spirit, they'll say, well, the Holy Spirit told me to do this. The Holy Spirit told me to do that. And if there's a fear or a wound, a lot of times they're, they're making decisions based off of fear. And I've done it, and we've all done it. And there's been times where I love what Jesus wants us to do, which is to lean into the body of Christ, which is the entire body, body parts, more than one, and leadership, and just, and just hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit 
and, and making sure that it's not just a good thing, but it's a God thing. See, a good thing would have been going into that area of Asia, but a God thing was he understood the timing of it. It wasn't that he says no. See, every promise from Jesus is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And so a lot of times when the Lord says no, it's not now, it's a yes for later. And so absolutely he cared for those people in Asia. Another, another um, example of this, because I don't wanna just pull something from scripture, but another example is when Jesus healed uh, the leper, he actually tells them, don't, don't tell anyone. Um, go to the high priest or go to the priest of the area and, and show them uh, that you've been cleansed because that was, they needed to get back into the city, right? They needed to show that they were healed but he told him not to tell anyone. And guess what the, le the leper did? He told everyone. And so uh, in Mark, it says that Jesus wasn't able to go into the cities because that man had disobeyed the instruction of Jesus. Now, wouldn't you think that it's a good thing to tell everyone that you've been healed? That's what I would think. And so it would be really difficult for me not to tell everyone, but Jesus specifically asked the man, and, and actually the word in Mark says in, in the uh, New Living or in the New King James, it says sternly told him. And so he is, he is correct, correcting him. And so the Holy Spirit corrects us. I, I, why, am I, why am I sharing with you this with you? Because there's good things and there's God things. And oftentimes God is doing something behind the scenes that's bigger. And so listening to Jesus, listening to the Holy Spirit, if 2020 punched you in the ear and you feel like you're, you're trying to get your balance and you're trying to feel like, man, the enemy really came against me in 2020, I want you to know that the body of Christ needs to come together. The body of Christ needs to uh, bring uh, healing to that ear. Immediately when I got hit in the ear, my hand went to my ear. The reason why my hand went to the ear is because the um, pain that was in my ear. And so my hand knew, hey, let's, let's, let's touch the ear. And so maybe that's you and you're, you're going through pain right now. And so a lot of people withdraw from the body and, you know, especially people that think they're the church alone. And Jesus gave us gifts and he gave the gifts inside of one another. And so I want you to know that the Holy Spirit in you is needed in the body of Christ. And so, pastor, you say, well, you've got the Holy Spirit in you, so you don't need the Holy Spirit in me. Well, that's not how uh, Jesus set up the church. See, there's different parts of the body, and the Holy Spirit's moving in his gifts, and, and so the whole body is needed, and you're a part of that, and you're needed in the body of Christ. And so gathering with the saints, Hebrews 10, is important. And you say, well, I know what you're going to preach. I know the word. I'm getting it online, I'm getting it, um, you know, I'm really getting it in my closet, my prayer time, I'm very independent with Jesus, and that is a beautiful thing. I want you to do that because that's the first part of receiving from Jesus. And then our vision is giving and serving, which was the idea and the vision of Jesus himself. The reason why is because he said, freely you receive, so freely give. And if we haven't received, then we're giving out of our own uh, obligation. And so we talked about it last week. Obligation, you'll, you'll, you'll run out of energy. You'll run out of, of reason why. But the Holy Spirit inside of you is needed within the church. And so you come to church, and I'm not talking about, um, you know, hey, you know, sit down in the pew, don't say anything to anyone. You know, I'm talking about you're bringing the presence of the Holy Spirit within you to speak to people around you that are there because they need what you have, the Holy Spirit inside of you. And so you have good things and God things within you. Okay, well, so let's go back to good things and God things. So good things is medicine, right? And medicine can heal us. And, and I certainly have taken medicine. I appreciate doctors, especially godly doctors. I know some godly doctors out there and I'm thankful for them. There's also a God thing, which is communion. And God shows us that it is uh, for healing for our body. And so 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven, 27, it's talking about communion and the power of communion and doing it in the remembrance of Jesus. And Paul says to the Corinthian church, they were, they were overdoing things and they were meeting um, and, and were hungry for the bread and the, and the wine and they were actually getting drunk on it. So he's doing some correcting here, which is what the Holy Spirit does, is the Holy Spirit corrects us. He's our counselor. And anyways, 
Paul's taking that responsibility as the leader of that church, and he is correcting them, and he's saying anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, it's a good thing to take communion. It is a God thing to receive communion by faith. What do you mean, Brandon? Well, he goes on and says, that is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup, putting your faith in Christ Jesus, that his blood is, uh, it's more, it's, it's, it's his blood and it's his body that was broken, not just a wafer or, or I don't know how you do communion, maybe you do it with um, juice or, or, or really wine, but you have to really meditate to say, okay, um, this is more than just um, a snack. This is more than me just trying to fill my body. This is recognizing what Christ did, and that takes faith. And so they were coming to the table or coming to the church, and they were not recognizing what Christ did. And when we don't recognize what Christ did, which is pay for our sin, well, guess what? What's the destruction of sin? It's death. And Paul addresses that. He says, if you eat the bread and drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, which is, by the way, honoring his faith, right? You're eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. That is why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. Now, this, is, this sounds like, oh my goodness, Paul, you're rebuking them. But he's not. He's saying, listen, there, there are people dying early of age when God's gift is right there. Play, place your faith in the communion of what Christ did. It's not, the, it's not your faith in a wafer. It's not your faith in the, in the wine or the, or the juice. It's your faith in Jesus Christ. That's powerful. And so the communion reminds us it's done in remembrance of him. And so that's a God thing. That's not just a good thing. It's a good thing to take communion. It is a God thing to take communion by faith in Christ Jesus. And so they were doing a good thing, which was taking communion, but they weren't doing a God thing. And so once they do a God thing, Paul said they're going to have longer life. And he said because they weren't doing it by faith, they were having a short life. There were sick people. And I'm explaining to you that Jesus heals today. He loves to heal. And the word of God is healing. And people have said, you know, hey, I don't, I don't believe that healing is for today. And, and some teachers will even say they believe that, that, that we are the righteousness of God, but we're not healed. Well, let me tell you something. You can't see the righteousness of God in you. You can't, you have to do that by faith. And same thing with healing. You have to believe by faith that he has done it. By his stripes, we are healed. And that takes faith because our body is saying something different. Sometimes uh, when we say that we're righteous, sometimes we know our behavior was not righteous. And so we believe that Christ and his behavior made us righteous. And the purchase of our body, as we take communion, we remind our body that we are healed. Amen? Man, that's good news. Now, he uses the word dishonor, and I want to address that because he says, and if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ. So they were dishonoring the body of Christ. And the Lord showed me a picture of this, and I, I, this story is something that kind of popped into my head. There was a single mom that invited uh, 10 children to her, her child's birthday party. And out of those 10 kids, of course, she invited the parents. In fact, she even paid. She paid for that birthday party to happen. And the, the 10 children or the families, the 10 families RSVP'd. In other words, they reserved their spot. She knew they were coming, and so she paid in advance for them. When the day came, the birthday party was there, only one child showed up and only one parent. And the mother felt dishonored. And I, I really think that, that this is a, a picture, an example of what Jesus did. He paid for you and I to have his righteousness. He paid for you and I to be forgiven. He paid for you and I to um, have health. And so when we take communion, we're receiving what he paid for. It's a gift from him that we're receiving it by faith. And so it's honoring to his body. I hope that's hope that makes it clear. It's not a perfect analogy, uh, but it's something the Lord put on my heart. And so I just want to encourage you again. 2020. Maybe you got felt like you got punched in the in the face, 
and maybe you feel like, man, you, you couldn't hear the Lord, or you maybe thought you heard the Lord, but, but it was out of fear. When we hear the Holy Spirit, we want to hear him out of faith. And the Bible says that the enemy goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's roaring because he's trying to sound like, you can see behind me, the Lion of Judah. He's trying to sound like God, the Holy Spirit. And so if it doesn't take faith, it's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy, um, Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, and all of that is rooted in faith in Christ Jesus. And so I want you to understand you need the body. There are good things and there are God things. And the God things are a gift from Jesus Christ. And he wants you to experience his love. He wants you to experience the body of Christ coming to your needs. He wants to supply your needs according to his riches and glory. And guess what? The riches of his glory are hidden in the saints.